गुड मॉर्निंग शर्मा सर गुड मॉर्निंग अग्रवाल सर गुड मॉर्निंग एवरीबॉडी सर शेल वी स्टार्ट द सेशन यस मैम ओके अग्रवाल सर आर यू देयर ओके Sir, we are going to start the session. Yeah. Uh, namaskar and good morning to everyone connected to this webinar. Respected speaker of today's webinar, Shri S K Agarwal, our chairman Shri H P Sharma, and esteemed participants. I, Sarita Singh, CEO of Divyajyoti Valors Foundation, are you extend a warm welcome to you all in this program. As you are aware, the topic of today's webinar is case study on index part two. On 2nd October 2022, we had conducted a CP on the part one of the topic how to use index. Today in this webinar, you will have a case study on index, which will make clear as to how to use the index of made in actual case of valuation. Participants are aware that a value index is a measure or ratio that describes change in a nominal value relative to its value in the base year. in other words it is a tool for measuring change in a group of representative data points it is a method to track the performance of a group of assets in a standardized way it is one of the important tools in the hands of valuers to make use of it in case of need considering the importance of this aspect of index we have selected this topic for cp the topic is important and very useful for valuers that is why a very experienced and highly qualified speaker shri sk agarwal ji is taking this session without losing any further time i wish to hand over the mic to shri agarwal sir but before that i shall briefly introduce him to you for the sake of record though he needs no introduction shri sushil kumar agarwal ji is a btech from iit kanpur holds a holds a prestigious diploma in management from thunderbird usa he is a icwa inter and has undertaken courses in high speed high quality production techniques from aots japan project management from pii strategic management for leaders iim calcutta he is a registered valuer he is a member of expert committee of divyajyoti valuers foundation international valuation committee of iov chartered engineer for india and canada board of avts alumni association delhi he is npc approved lean consultant Besides having a rich and varied experience in valuation field, undertaking high value and prestigious valuation of assignments, he has over forty years of corporate experience as business head and manufacturing head. He has proven and known turn around expertise for various sectors and has international expertise and experience of working in Japan, Tanzania, and Germany. 
He is an avid speaker and is fond of teaching. He is a regular guest faculty at different institutions like IIT Golka, Technical University, MSU Baroda. He is our esteemed and very popular member of faculty for our MEPs and CEPs. Uh, sir, over to you. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Sarita ji. Uh, now, first is uh, to all our uh, fellow valuers, what we will do is we will share our experiences. To say that I am better than anybody is, is, uh, is absolutely foolhardy. So what we will do, we will share some experiences, we'll share some difficult cases, and we'll share where we used index in one of the cases. Actually, I started... I was planning to do more of index, but it turned out that case was pretty complicated. So I've taken one complicated case, which we can go through in a deeper way. I am based out of Gurgaon. Uh, I have worked with companies like Maruti Udyo, Glasson and Tubro, <coughs> General Motors and so on. And I have also worked internationally in Africa, Germany and Japan for long periods of time. Uh, anybody who has a different view or has got a new idea or is not clear, please stop there in between so that we can, you know, we can discuss it there and we can continue from there. I'm going to switch off my video to save bandwidth, uh, but I guess uh, all the participants will need to continue because uh, this has to be recorded as per IBBI requirements. Okay. Now, this is the first part we did was when we said how to use the index per se, we looked into a lot of indexes which are available in India. And that session went on to two and a half hours. And, you know, it was uh, uh, pretty interactive. I guess a lot of people are there from the old session also. But if not, then I think we should be able to look into this also. Okay, here we start. Now, the brief of the case is, uh, there is a company called Mawana Sugar, which is a chemical unit near Rajpura, Punjab. And there is also another company called Bodil Chemical, which is an Ahmedabad-based chemical company. And these, this is a sale transaction between two companies about a unit. So, so you know, Mawana Sugar and Bodil Chemical, they are both, Mawana Sugar is a seller, Bodo Chemical is a buyer. The whole unit is about an 80-acre unit, approximately 250-odd crores. And this was being sold as a lock, stock, and barrel, that complete unit from Mawana Sugar to Bodo. <clears throat> now, if you look into the price uh, thing from... 2000 to 2023, the Mawana sugar has moved the prices like this. This is the stock price index of, uh, this is the stock price, sorry, stock price of Mawana sugar on National Stock Exchange. This is only to show it is an actively traded stock. It is more than 20 years. And because a company which goes in such a long time, 20 years and so, there is a lot of highlight, there's a lot of interest of mutual fund, FIIs, and hence these companies become very strict in compliances. So it's a public quoted sugar and related product. It, it is a DCM group company. DCM group company, Lala Bharatram, Charatram, and his father, Lala Shriram, they started off in a very small place in old Delhi. Uh, and from there, they started making the, the clothes, the uh, daily cloth mills, as it was called. And then from there, they digressed into many things. They have a lot of uh, cultural footprints also in Delhi, uh, in, in theaters and so on, because Dr. Bharat Ram, his son, he was more of an artist rather than a, a businessman. So, and he's a headquartered in Delhi. Now, this is the price of Bodil Chemicals. This is also for about last 11 years. So they are also a company which is uh, <clears throat> about 11 years quoted on the NSE. Uh, this is based out of Ahmedabad at a head office. They are pretty strong uh, chemical company. Their biggest markets are more or less in the west of India. So 
So public coated special, specialty chemicals, Ahmedabad is the headquarter and so on. The reason I'm trying to show these slides are that because these two companies are coated companies for a long time, there's a lot of mutual funds who have purchased their shares. Hence, anything they do, which is of sizable value attracts a lot of attention. So, Mavana Sugar has a chemical unit near Rajpura in Punjab. Uh, where is Rajpura now? Now, we know Chandigarh. So Rajpura is approximately 80 kilometers from Chandigarh. Or if you are driving down from Delhi to uh, Amritsar, then the last major city of uh, Haryana is Ambala. And from Ambala, when you turn left towards Punjab, then the first major city comes is Rajpura. Ambala is known for his Ambala can, and the first Rafales which came into India, they were post, uh, positioned in Ambala. I don't know where they are now. So Ambala is a pretty big uh, center in North India. And this uh, factory is approximately 40 kilometers west of uh, Ambala. And this unit manufacture chlorines and we other- 28 kilometers. Sorry? 28 kilometers from Ambala, Rajpura. Oh, so very good. You know about it. Very good. <laughs> okay. I am a ah, okay, very good, sir. So this unit manufactures chlorine and other chemical, and they sell in the local market, which is Punjab, Haryana, and Himachal. And the unit is set up in... I've missed out here, something got to tell up. The unit was set up in 1996, 97, 95 to 97. And let me give you some more details about that unit. Now, the, the reason why we got into picture was for purchase price allocation. So what is purchase price allocation? Now, any asset, which is such a huge asset, the price will include land value, a building value, a plant and machinery value, intellectual property value, market value, brand value, and other values. Now, when the price is negotiated and paid, it is a final consolidation price. Nobody bifurcates these things. End of the day, the price is valued by the two owners, one owner on one side and the other owner on one side or their representative with owner sitting one step back and they keep negotiating till the time they reach a figure of yes and no and that is it. So this price, whatever is negotiated, finally has to go to the books of account of the buyer and what and how it has to go, it is done by Indian Accounting Standard 103. So what is Indian Accounting Standard 103? It is on a purchase price allocation. The key things are, uh, A, recognizes and measure in its financial statement. Now, financial statement means all the balance sheet, uh, profit loss, all, all the total schedules of accounts in that. The identifiable asset acquired, the liability assumed and any non-controlling interest in the acquiry. Now here it is very clear, identifiable assets. Identifiable assets would also include intellectual property if it can be identified. Plus of course, all the physical assets like land, building, machines, cars, or whatever it is. The second B part is, to recognize and measure the goodwill acquired in the business combination as a gain from a bargain price. So, you know, there again, whatever is the bargain price, there is a goodwill. Normally, the valuation is done. And the difference between the valuation and the price paid is considered as goodwill. And C, determine what information to disclose to enable users of financial statement to evaluate nature and financial effects of the business combination. So, you know, the whole people who are using these financial statements, and in this case, there are large size uh, investors, that they should understand that, yes, what has happened. 
So this is a comprehensive standard on the way of acquisition, date of acquisition, type of acquisitions, and how different heads are allocated. So, you know, now this standard is not used quite commonly, but in case even one of the transaction uh, company is a public quoted of long standing or large market cap, they typically make sure that these Indian accounting standard 103 of price purchase price allocations are used. Any questions so far, sir? Okay, let's continue. Now, what were the concerns? The concerns will be as a valuer, both sellers and buyers are public quoted companies. Both have done the valuation before the financial transaction. It was very interesting. The financial transactions was approximately 150 crores. The seller had got its value at about 290 crores and the buyer had got it valued at about 90 crores. So 290 crores and 90 crores and the final transaction was approximately 150 crore. I hope you please appreciate that. I can't tell you the, the final prices. So, you know, and both these two valuations were done by hardcore engineers who knew the chemical industry. One of them was also a registered valuer. So first thing that we, we learn on these type of transactions is that a, tra a valuation is one side of the story. But the final transaction happens between the two individuals sitting across the table or two companies sitting across the table. So valuation is only an indication and an opinion, but the transaction is the final. thing. The second was it was an all cash deal, which means the bottle chemical paid full cash to Moana Sugar over a period of time. And that was it. There was no share swaps or whatever it is uh, like this. And what they came to us because they needed a RBI registered valuer to put a stamp on the purchase price allocation. When we took the assignment, we were very sure that the valuation will be under strict, strict scrutiny by merchant bankers, analysis of the stock market, SEBIs, and it will be our job to make sure all are satisfied apart from even the, the buyers. So, you know, the, the, it has to be correct. It has to appear to be correct. And all these people need to be satisfied with the logic and the data and everything that we use. So on from that matter, it became a pretty uh, strict uh, assignment and, and, and so on. But that's part of life. Now, these are some pictures of the plant. Uh, it's a pretty big plant. So chemical plants, so a lot of pipes and a lot of these silos and so on. And this is a small workshop. They call it a small workshop, but okay. <laughs> so these are again, some of the pictures of the plant. Okay, now here, this is the, I have not, I've taken out the values, but this is the FAR that we got from them. So we had land building factory, non-factory. Uh, we have plant in machinery, you know, uh, chlor alkali plant, which means chlorine alkali plant. This makes chlorine and caustic soda, which was imported out of England. Then brine house EOT, electric overhead crane, brine house plant, cell house and rectifiers. Now the way the process it is made is the common salt is dissolved in water and then electricity is passed through that. With that electricity, chlorine is generated as a gas and uh, whatever is left is the caustic soda. And that caustic soda is dissolved in water that can then be dried and made as caustic soda powder, which can be sold in the market. Uh, the biggest use of caustic soda is in cleaning purposes and all these uh, uh, soap manufacturer and cleaning and whatever they use uh, caustic soda in very large quantity. One of the largest producer of caustic soda in India is in Chennai called Chemplast. They are producing something like 4,000 tons a day or some, some, some crazy figure like that. 
So, and still in India, we are uh, short of uh, caustic soda and sometimes caustic soda, to my understanding, is imported. So, uh, <clears throat> from a plant point of view, yes, they, it was very good. It has a good market. Now, so we had the brine house flaking plant. Flaking plant means, okay, let me go through. So, chloralkali plant means chlorine alkaline, chlorine and caustic soda production. Brine house, brine house, brine means salt dissolved in water, and salt is caustic, sorry, NaCl, sodium chloride. So, that is uh, the crane there. The reason why crane is used is because the salt used to come in really huge quantities and there was no way to handle it manually. So, we had cranes. And then we had the brine house where uh, the salt is dissolved in water. Cell house and rectifier. Now, this means the electricity which was coming there, it had to be converted into from AC to electric, uh, DC power, so a rectifier. Faking plant is when the dissolve, water dissolved caustic soda, the water is evaporated, so you have small flakes. So that's a flaking plant. Lime clean hydrogen plant, they were also producing some green, some hydrogen, and it would be a green hydrogen for them. Wave bridges, HCl, HCl is hydrochloric acid. Because they had chlorine, they were producing hydrochloric acid. Evaporator house, caustic storage and dispatch, SBP plants. Yeah, so they had nitrogen plant and ETP plant. Now this was something very interesting. Uh, such type of factory today, they do not have ETP plants or chemical disposal in their factory. And there are common uh, effluent treatment units which are set up by the government or by third party agencies which do all of this. So they had a permission for the ETP plant and disposal of chemical waste, so which made the property value very high. Then chlorine natural neutralization plant, DM is demineralized water plant, boilers, fuel, oil storage, instrumentation, air compressor, power electric distributor, transformer, and water supply, hypo plant, workshop machinery, instrumentation, DG sets. There was a canal water pipeline. So it was taking uh, water from Yamna Satlaj link canal. So there were uh, pipe walls and all the this thing. Plant and machinery, chlorine house, chlorometer, chlorine cylinders, and capital sphere. So this was a, a type of list we got from, uh, from the company. And the good thing was each one of them had a gross block listed on the date. And then it had the total depreciation and the net block. So we had three figures and it was much better than a lot of assignments we, we get on but it was there. Then we also had office equipments. We had computers. Most of the computers, interestingly, were more than three years old. So actually they were not worth anything. And furniture, fixtures, motor vehicles. So this is the type of list that we got from where we started off. Any questions, sir? Nothing. Okay. Say about water supply, sir. You said they were taking water from uh, Satli Jamal in Canal. Huh. Yes. But it is not existing. Satli so Jamal the, in Canal. So there must be a. See, I did not see the canal. This was what they told me. So there must be some more canal or something else from where they were taking or part of Satli Jamal Canal link and so on. So, so. Sir, one thing. Uh, this. Are in the uh, previous list, previous page, there is end AS entry. What is e this AG under AG? AG. Where here in AS one zero three? No, no, no. In that uh, 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 list of the equipments. Yes. And the next page. Ah, uh, this last uh, last part one uh, row. The chlorine engine. cylinder in the AS entry. Now, what, what is uh, in the AS entry? In the AS is Indian accounting standard. So they have yeah. made entry as per Indian accounting standard. 
So actually what I have done, I've just taken a copy paste of the Excel sheet okay, they so, gave to us. So this, this particular, uh, this thing is not as, has no, uh, uh, this thing uh, on the evaluation. No, see, this is what we got. Yeah. Okay. How we are going to treat all these things, I'm going to show you later. Okay. Okay. So looking into this, I just cannot take so a decision. This entry has no significance in this valuation exercise. You see, as of this moment, when we got this, we, we first looked at this and tried to study this, whether this okay. will have a, a effect or this will not have an effect. Okay. okay. And okay. I will come to chlorine cylinders later. So, so, uh, uh, see, when we get these things, uh, we read through it and for every small clarification, we can't go to the customer. No? So what we do, we first study, we look into the detail, we do our thinking, and then we have a meeting with the customer that we need such clarification. And this is the way we are going to go about it. Correct, sir? And these are big companies. These are 800, 900 crore companies. If you go and uh, talk to their CFO or somebody, they will they will say, "Acha, kal baat karenge, yar, etc." And then you know, and all these companies they come, they want the what you call the draft report in two days, and and so on. I'm sure most of us we know about that. Okay, so anything else, sir? Let's continue. Okay. So some more information, you get the sea salt from Gujarat. Most of the salt which was coming was from uh, around Bhuj, Bachau, and uh, the run area. Then they dissolve it in water, they pass current through it. And then when they pass the current, they get chlorine gas, caustic soda, hydrochloric acid, and other chemicals. And all these chemicals, as we know, are in big use in the large variety of industries. Uh, and the reason why it was set up there by uh, DCM group was because they found that transporting salt is easier and cheaper than acid and chlorine. So they would have a ready market and which was true, the plant is, was closer to the market, which is mainly Punjab, Himachal and Haryana. Uh, some more information. Uh, asset acquisition started in 95-96. More than 50% mechanical assets were imported. Now, this was uh, this is where problems and indexes and other things starts coming in. Now, this is the only land of 80 acre in the location. So, from Rajpura up to uh, Ambala, there was no land sold from independence of one contiguous 80 acres land. So, of course, they were smaller. The normal transaction in that area, which is also industrial to some extent, was 10 acres, 20 acres, and so on. So, that was one major issue on valuation. The second um, value issue means how do you handle those large areas? Large areas have got advantages as on today because you don't get those. The second big advantage in this land was they had the permission to dispose chemical waste inside the premises which is impossible to get today. So these two increases the, uh, what you call the total value. Then it was a running plant. You know That is something which was very good. And running plant always is, uh, has got its own advantages, which means everything is there and, and asset is not missing and so on. And it was a profitable plant. So that was also very good. Then there is a fair amount of obsolescence was there, whereby increasing in the cost. For example, in the chlor alkali plant, the modern plant had less power per kg of chlorine uh, production as compared to this plant. So this was an obsolescence. So we, we had to make sure that those obsolescence are also taken care by, uh, by our valuation. Overall, maintenance of the asset was quite good because from 95, 96 up to now, it is about 25 year plus and the plant is running and making a profit. So maintenance has to be pretty good. Also, compliances were quite strict. So we did not find any, any non-compliance 
they had their uh, fire uh, noc up to date their labor inspectors everything was up to date so the fire the compliance and because this was making very uh, uh, what do you call um, uh, they were making chemicals which could be fatal to the people like uh, hcl and chlorine so the the whole environment and other issues were very very strictly followed so compliance were strict it is not necessarily from the government point of view even their internal controls were quite good now what were the other issues that we said was there were many smaller factories inside a factory now what it means is that once you produce chlorine then you were also producing hydrochloric acid from that factory then from caustic soda solution you were producing flakes then you were producing nitrogens so you know there were smaller factories inside a large factory so it has its advantage in the sense of it gives a better a return on investments because one uh, one item becomes a feeder to the another factory and the value addition is better then these units were mix of imported plant local plant construction at sites and upgrades so in 25 years the plant which were uh, imported as on today you need not import those plants you, you can get them in india then a lot of local plants were also there and they were combined of the two because such type of factories can never be imported as a whole the whole piping and everything gets imported so sorry is local so only key things were imported at that point and and then you do a local and of course construction is at site and the, there were upgrades which were happening uh, on a regular basis however the detailed information on what happened over 25 years was lacking which was not surprising to us so that was one the capacity of each unit was also not confirmed you know when we asked for the capacities they they three people gave us three different answers so we were not sure of the capacities and the records also did not show a consistent capacity utilization which means the production was varying the what we were told by the my local management in the plant was that this production is taking care of the local supplies and we are not keeping large stocks so we we did not make any decision on base but that's fine and the owners the mamana sugar they were started losing interest as these are ddd industry dirty and and derogatory and all such things so the mamana sugar owner said here yeah, we don't want to go into one small units we will go into sugar and then from sugar we can go into ethanol and ethanol is uh, replacing petrol plus ethanol i can make uh, whiskey and other liquor which earns me higher profit so so they wanted to get out of a non core industry so they were selling and the buyers they wanted to expand so they had already got an approval from the from their board for expansion so their idea was to set up a greenfield project but then getting a brownfield running profitable project it was much more attractive so buyers are from gujarat they were planning an expansion but in gujarat and this running plant gave them a good opportunity close to the plant they understand the manufacturing so that was one thing very good and they have experts in the organization to take over the management so it was not that uh, bordel has to hire experts or to do anything uh, another very big thing i have not written it though when we talked to the cfo was that they have 80 acres of land and they were about 25 to 30 acre which was absolutely lying vacant for them to expand and do more things uh, and and the total you know the whole the buying group the bodil chemical they were pretty excited when we met their plant head who had come there or we had talked to their cfos the whole enthusiasm about the plant was very high and it appeared that uh, bodil is also excited because they got the plant from their view at a cheaper price so it was a interesting thing a marwadi businessman called mawana sugar and a gujarati businessman negotiating very difficult to say who is the smarter one <laughs> okay so any question so far i'm giving you a lot of background because you know to to understand it becomes 
very easy and want to make it more story like okay approaches and methods so market approach we cannot use market approach because the plant and all the plant as assets were custom built all the factories everything was custom built and these plants are set up one in few years it is not that these are regular production item we can do from one to another and technology also plays a major part on these plants because technology keeps getting upgraded the normal way is a technology sold by one company the construction is done by second company and it is run by third company so you know the market approach is not there there is no regular transaction from one from a for a standard product between one buyer and other seller so there were but <clears throat> they had a lot of uh, assets like ac car forklifts and so on which we of course used the market approach because there you can't use a uh, uh, ac which was 8 year old i can't use a cost approach so it has to be a market approach in that so for the major asset it was a not a market approach but for smaller asset it was a market approach then as an income approach now this is a complex part plant it was not a easy plant big plant it has many sub unit that can be operated independently but who will require a considerable amount of common infrastructure so if i do an income approach what do i do with the common infrastructure which is there so you know that becomes uh, one issue now another issue is it has a very large tract of land 80 acres which is actually not required for so much so as the normal uh, you know old businessmen people used to say you take more land than what is required because if nothing else the land will cover my losses in case there is a loss so so they had a huge land and how do we take income approach with the land uh, the land value itself may be much higher so the fair market share in the local value and so on so we discarded the income approach and in such plants normally also income approach does not work we could also understand that we will have to defend the valuation with the merchant bankers rather there were two merchant bankers with whom we had to defend finally we will also have to defend with their auditors and these auditors were the big four auditors and big four auditors anybody who has dealt with them have much bigger egos uh so we had to defend this with the, the auditors we may also have to defend with the tax authorities because you know here it was very interesting now let us say the plant was 150 crore now the the buyer one of the view was you reduce the value of the land and increase the value of the plant and machinery so i can take more depreciation will could reduce my income tax and which will increase my share price so you know so there were very very interesting situations which was uh, going on there and of course everybody was talking how to do this and what to do this and so on as, as a valuer our job is to listen to everybody not to react and then do and we also knew we had to defend with sab and nsc we landed up defending it with sab who had a it was supposed to be a 15 hour session went up to 2 and a half hours and the good thing we can pat our backs with that we did not uh, had to change anything in the valuation only we had to change the report when making it more clear to the people who can understand it so we knew one thing that everything has to have a logic and that has to be based on sound principles and all data has to be collaborated evidence from reliable sources so the things many things that we do on a simple thing that we use gut feelings and so on in this cases we will not be able to do anything like it. so we decided we will use this for the cost approach so for the plant and machinery we decided to use this for the cost approach for land and building we use different approaches and we use several other things to come but uh, let me go through with the plant and machinery value valuation i am also a plant and machinery valuer so the what is the standard way of cost approach for such plant you get the reproduction cost new check the condition of the present plant this is the life of the plant this is the obsolescence this is the residual value and then there's a standard calculations so this is an absolutely standard approach for such plants on the cost approach whether and and it goes for valuation of any anybody 
Now here, we faced a problem was RCN, which are very impossible to get. The supplier does not exist anymore. The drawings are not available. Then the different supplier, they're not interested to quote. They say, what value are you at? Don't, don't bore us. So how much we'll take 5 lakh rupees to give you a quotation and all such things that, that we normally face. So they were not interested. International valuers are not even interested to reply into anything. And uh, there was an INR depreciation, custom duty rule changes, freight cost, and so on. So, so, you know, there were a lot of things, problems that we were facing on even getting into the RCM. So we, dis we decided to use the index methods on how to do. But then index methods are not very easy. They have their own problems. So now we'll go through uh, the whole thing one at a time. Now, how did we go about it? We took the gross block of 95, 96 onward. This included cost of assets in USD. Logistic duty erection trail, major addition since then. However, these were just number, there were no detail. And if details were available, they were impossible to study. So let us, we took the chlor, the chlorine caustic soda plant as a test case, which we will show here and we will also discuss. Because once we decide on what that one major biggest asset, the other asset becomes much easier. So uh, the first thing was we got the gross block. So from the gross block, we said we'll have to take so many things. We'll have to reduce the trials cost, the startup cost of the plant and so on. Then we have to see what is the erection and commissioning costs. Then what are the logistics in India, duties and taxes, shipping cost, and the FOB in UST. Now, one thing very clearly we understood is the cross block that we got today, if I take the Indian index to get the present RC and replacement cost or reproduction cost new, it will not work. Why? First, more than 50% of the plant is imported. So the depreciation of the repeat has to be taken into account somewhere. The second thing is, as of this moment, the shipping cost is extremely high. I know very well, four years ago, before COVID, one full 40-fit container, two US used to cost $4,000. And till two months back, it was costing $11,000. So the shipping costs made big differences. Third is duty and taxes. The whole structure of duty and taxes in 96, 97, and now is totally different. So, so there was no GST, present there is GST, then there were countervailing and a lot of, lot of things were there. So that, that has to start making a difference. So we, when we started looking into this, we were clear that we cannot use the Indian index. However, we will have to use indexes of, US, of UK. So how did we go about it? Now let's look into that. Now we, when we started looking into the various figures, how do we get the figures? Because there was no figures mentioned in the FAR or they had no data where to prove that whatever gross block is written is correct or not correct. We had to start from there. And because these are public quoted company audited for a long time and the figures of FAR were 25 year old, we were nobody to question the figure. We had to take the figure as it is, okay. So what we did, we are engineers. We also took a help from other engineers. And we said, in these sort of plants, what is the way we, what is the percentages that we work on to get the cost? Or what is the cost which takes place in such type of things? So what people told us was, and we reached a conclusion after discussion with various people, the trial cost is approximately 1% in chemical plant. Because it take first is it takes a huge amount to heat the plant and cool the plant and clean the plant before you can start. And then the whole flushing of the plant with chemicals and so on has to be done. Many times these chemical plants which have got their linings inside, some plastic lining, another lining, they get a spoil. So all of that has to be corrected. So it takes about 1% of the total capex, which they said is a fair value. Then in erection and commissioning, 3%. Now erection and commissioning also means preparing the ground and 
and preparing the power up to that place, some pipes and whatever it is, all of that goes into erection and commissioning. And 3% was a figure which, which we said, fine, we will be able to stand by because we have several people who are substantiating that. So 3% we took. The internal logistic of 4% because the plant had come to Mumbai, Mundra was not working at that point. So from Mumbai getting out and then getting this plant to all the way to Rajpura in 95, 96, it took more than a month. Uh, you know, you, you can only travel a certain distances, certain bridges cannot be done because of the weight and so on. So, and this we came to know from some of the very senior mechanics there, Kirab, it took one month for the plant to come and, and it used to run only, you know, very small distance. The trucks were not of large sizes. So, you know, all such problems were there. The custom duties and was 12 plus 10 plus 4 percent. Now, here we faced a very major problem. Nowhere in India you can get a book of the custom duties from 1957 up to now. Uh, so, it took us a lot of effort and we were finally able to get some from archives of a university. So, so from there, we were able to get the custom duties. And please believe me, it is a major issue. We don't have the data easily available, even after payment. The largest uh, people who published this uh, Jan Book Depot and taxmen in Delhi, you know, when we called them, they were laughing at us. They say, oh, come on, we don't have three-year-old, you're talking 25-year-old. So <laughs> that was one. Then the sea freight, 4% which even today people take as 4% as a pretty standard. So by then, how much will be FOB in INR, which will has to be multiplied by the conversion factor. So the cost at USD would have to become as the FOB. And then we apply index. So let us see how we went about it. So we said gross block assumed 1 lakh. Any questions so far, sir? Is it interesting enough? Sir, this customs duty, custom duty 12% plus 4% plus is this a, uh, what is the breakup? No, I, I, I show the calculations later on. Plus, please, please accept that it is, it was written as 12% plus 10% plus 4. One is the custom duty, other is a countervailing, third is a cess. So that this was prevailing at that time? Yes, at that time. Okay. Okay. Any any, any other questions, sir? Interesting enough? Sir, what is included in gross block? Gross block is all the expenses which is done till the time the asset starts commercial production. Including land and building and everything, sir, your only machine cost. When we say gross block for the company, it includes land and building. But gross block is also calculated for each line item. So, Could gross you explain in detail, sir, something about this? Okay. Let me. We, we, we are yeah, civil yeah, I... engineers. No, no, that's, that's fine, sir. Let me go back and explain it. Now here. Now this is the fixed asset register that we got. Now in the fixed asset register, the first item is land. So whatever land was purchased at that point of time, that is included in this. Land is never depreciated. So the whatever including the brokerage charges, including the charges for, you know, some of it is for development, filling and whatever, some for conveyance deed, all of that comes into the land cost, which is called the gross block of land. Right, sir? Once the mm -hmm. land, land comes in, then the second thing is you make a factory. Now, with a factory, you also have to make non-factory construction, like roads, like, uh, you know, factory boundary wall, gates, offices. So these are, the buildings are divided into two parts. 
the factory and the non-factory. And in such type of uh, industry, the factory building is far, far larger than non-factory. Uh, the buildings have a depreciation, but land has no depreciation. Correct, sir? Uh, I am talking of the 4% is sieve trade. So for that 4% uh, is on machine, plant and machinery. Correct. So, so why it is including land, building, factory, non-factory? So it, it, I think it should be on the mach machine, plant and machinery only. Because we have imported plant and machinery, not land and building. Uh, the, what I have written there is, now, if you look into this sheet, then there are various items written there. Okay. Now, when we do the vaccine, all these items, they have a different life also in plant and machinery. Similarly, in the building, different buildings have a different life, a different maintenance cost. So, when the valuation is done, even for land and building valuation, different buildings are treated differently, depreciation is different, and then they are valued. Similarly, for plant and machinery, different type of assets are valued on a different way. What the example I'm showing is, as I had said, the plant, which is chlorine alkaline plant, which was the biggest assets in that whole uh, uh, premises. In fact, at the time when the plant was, uh, this factory was set up, the land cost was far, far lower than that particular asset. Does that answer your question, sir? Okay, sir, you may continue. I've got a question, sir. You see, yes, when you given the uh, breakup of the plant and machinery, I understand in the FAR all the gross block as also the WDB must have been provided. Now, uh, if you go to the next page, for what would be the infra common infrastructure cost? Is also men mentioned anywhere? No, there was no common. Now, out on this, like DG set, hmm. DG set is a common infrastructure. Yeah, yes now, yes. now, the way the valuation we do, see, we do when we do with our uh, land and building is first mm. is we divide what will be included in land and building and what will be included in plant and machinery. Yes. The reason is let us take a case, they have an overhead crane which is set outside, not inside the factory, mm -hmm. and that crane is 40 ton crane. Now, mm. the whole columns were made out of concrete. Mm -hmm. The crane was obviously a mechanical device. Mm -hmm. So there, we have to be clear. Mm -hmm. A, will the plant and machinery do the complete valuation? Mm -hmm. Or land and building will do the complete valuation? Or the mm -hmm. civil structure will be done by uh, civil guys and the mechanical will be done by mechanical mm -hmm. guys. So this division takes place. So, uh, you know, I, I work with a company called Black Olive Ventures, which are a, a fair size uh, valuation firm of land and building. Mm -hmm. so, so there we have a very clear understanding. And before we start the work, this division takes place immediately. Mm -hmm. e electricity, this and Oh, sorry, land and building will include these, rest you do. For another example, uh, fire, fire, complete fire systems. Now, complete mm -hmm. fire system, jockey pumps, and so on. In some cases, our land and building colleagues take it up. And in many cases, I take it up as a plant and machinery. Mm -hmm. So the idea is that we should not have an asset valued twice, or we should not have an asset which is left out. Mm -hmm. No, my question was, wouldn't it be better if you separate all the common infrastructure so you know you've got a total? I, I'm sure the, in the FAR they have not mentioned, but for the for the sake of valuation, wouldn't it be uh, convenient for you to segregate all the common infrastructure? Sir, and... sir how will I segregate a road of 2.6 kilometers into ETP plant, 
DM plant. No, no, no. I'm, I'm talking about plant and machinery, not, <laughs> not, not the road or uh, uh, land building. Plant and no. machinery. No. So in plant and machinery, what we do is because we have each asset which is uniquely identified with a number, we start mm -hmm. with that. Okay. Like a DG set. Mm -hmm. Now, a DG set, how do I divide DG set in all of these separately? Mm -hmm. Yes, it is possible to do. Mm -hmm. pa power electrical cables. Of course, every electrical cable can be mm -hmm. measured and then we can differentiate to all the things. But does it make, will it add value to the total number or will the total number change? They oh, agree. You know, in, in this case, the whole plant in all the combi combined plant is being sold in one go. So it's obviously it's not required. Correct. So, so, but what you say, we have done that forever. We were doing a valuation for a Japanese company near Gurgaon. They mm -hmm. had three factories inside one large premise. Mm -hmm. So there we did ask them that of your common facilities like DG set and ETP and other, please give us a number which we include for the plant you want us to value. Mm -hmm. okay. So, okay. And, and they gave us that number. Thank you. Yeah. Here. Okay. So the custom duty. So this is what the thing was. So from there we went, we said, okay, let us take gross block as one lakh rupees. So the trial cost 1% will be 1,000. Erection in commissioning 3% will be 3,000. Logistic 4% will be 4,000. Custom duty 26%, so 26,000. And the USD INR was 42.8. So the cost in USD will be 1448.60. So, so this is what uh, you know the first cut was. But the question is, is it correct? What do you think, sir? Is this the method correct? Any opinion, sir? Not sure. Okay, this is not correct. The reason why this is not correct is the gross block is comes in the end. This is wrong. The gross block comes in the end. We start with the FOB value, and then from there it goes up. So the way it is done is, first we take the gross block, uh, sorry, FOB value, say A, we multiply by the INR value, we get B. Then we get C freight, which is 4%, which is C. Then we get custom duties, which are very standard way of calculating. Then we get logistics, and then we get the gross block. So instead of working from gross block downwards, what we have to do is we have to first come to a method by which we go from bottom upwards. So how we did that was <clears throat> we started off with a USD value. So we said it is about 10,000 USD. <coughs> Excuse me. So from USD value, 42.8, so 42,800. Then the C rate of 4%, which comes to, you know, in rupee value, 1712. Custom duties, then we calculated at 12. So first in custom duties are always calculated on CIF. So it is the FOB plus C rate. So we calculated the total custom duty of 12%, 4%. 12% and 10%. And the CES was on custom duty because we took out the value of that year. So we got the total tax as 10,184 uh, rupees, assuming 10,000. Logistic local, then we calculated on the total cost so far. Then erection and commissioning, again on the total cost so far and trial cost, which was 1% on the cost done so far, and we got into the final gross block. So instead of calculating from top down, we have to assume a FOB value and then do the calculation upwards. So by doing that, we converted as 10,000 convert to 59,000. Yes, <clears throat> 
excuse me this yes, uh, dollar rate is uh, of the current year or it is then the of that year item was that year current year is 83 sir i'll come to that also okay. but sir but sir calculation is not 40 to 42 oh, yes, yes, you are right yeah, it comes to right. 4 lakh 28000 yes yes it comes to 4 lakh 28000 so i should take cost of usd as 1000 i'm sorry i'm sorry sir this needs to be corrected so when i will send the uh, presentation that will get corrected okay so say the gross block was 93 crore 22 lakhs so 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 much and so this comes into if we do that calculation comes to about usd 15 uh, crores and from 15 crores again this all calculation will change i will change it and this from 15 crores <clears throat> So now what we do is, this is the FOB value of we calculated of that time, 1995-96. Now, if we have to get the RCN, what will be the FOB value now? So as the asset was from Britain, we will have to use the British industrial indexes. And British industrial indexes are not available for free. So I've just taken some data. This is not the actual data, but approximately. So index in 1995-96 was 766, whereas the index in 2021 was 1132, in which case it will come to as about 23 crores USD. And where do you get the data? I'm showing you the websites. Uh, the reason I'm showing the website is this is the Office of National Statistics of UK from where we got the data. And we have to pay to get the historic data. And all of these things we had put into our reports so that uh, you know, whenever the, the people who question us, they should be sure that yes, data is coming from authentic sources. Another thing is, uh, this is what is the container freight indexes on how the container freights have changed from them then up to now because we did not have any container rate at that time, we took as 4%. So we, we, <clears throat> we also uh, were able to get an approximate index because they were asking us a lot of money for giving us the actual index. So we, we did not use it, but we got some approximate values. Again, the reason I'm showing is how do we can get various indexes in the world and these indexes sometimes are the only way one can do valuations. So now we, how we did the calculation was uh, 23 crores FOB USD rate now is 78. This was in 2021, so it was 71. So it is 1,181 crores. Freight rate 4%, 7 crores. So subtotal is 189. Custom duty now is 12% plus 18% GST, but GST can be a drawback. We can take a input GST, so we cannot include that in our valuation. So that comes as 22.69 crores, which comes to then 211 crores. So the domestic transport 4% of 211, which is eight crores. Erection and commissioning 3%, 6.35 crores. We come to 226 crore, trial cost 1%, and the present RCN comes to 228 crores. Actually, it will be a slightly different figure because I had made a mistake earlier. Okay. Any questions, sir? So it will be 2,288 crores, right? Correct. Okay. So next step, RCN of 228.85, which is the present. Now in obsolescence, when we found out there were new technology products are energy efficient by 20%. This is the biggest uh, issue that uh, the uh, buyers told us. And our research also showed us they're energy efficient by 20 to 25%. 
and they are also efficient by 10% on manpower usage these plants are more or less fully automatic and they also meet the present environmental of uh, norms this plant was not fully environmental compliant but because it was an old plant and it was on the run out life the local pollution controls had agreed to continue that so what we did was we have to take a obsolescence reduction of 20% on energy and 10% on manpower which is 30% so the rcn got reduced by 30% which became 170.2 crores 160.2 crores okay now the plant was running at about 85% capacity plus up and minus whatever it was going on then it was pretty well maintained they also had annual shutdowns for major repairs and our estimate of the life was about 30 years the installation year was 97 and the valuation year was 2021 so the life which was finished was 24 years and the residual life was only 6 years for this plant i got one question sir yes sir earlier you said that the plant capacity was not clearly um, determinable so how do you know whether it is running at 85% or more or less you are absolutely correct mm -hmm. this figure plant was running at 85% is purely what their managers and others told us plus mm -hmm. the production was varying up and down in large seasonalities also mm -hmm. okay sir okay then we cal what we said is what will be the residual value now a plant like these which has a lot of technology content and design content there the residual thumb rule of 5% or 7.5% or something cannot be taken because when the plant like these are scrap what you get is just scrap material cost you don't get uh, any value for the design or whatever plus these plant cannot be sold to another third party who can shift these plants to any other premises and make it run so that is also not possible so we know the removing cost in many assets is very high sometimes the removing cost may be much more than the scrap value so this is one and the design costs are also high in very specialized plants like these are so we know that so we did further analysis the total iron estimate of such plant was 200 tons now this estimates we take by taking the outside measurements pipes and so on and assuming thicknesses the control and electronics were there then there were a lot of pumps valve valve solenoids now these things can be utilized for some more time when they are put to alternate use so we had to consider that as well so our estimate was that iron is scrap at that time was 32 rupees per kg and we have we reduced 4 rupee per kg for cutting and removal this 4 rupee per kg we got from a local scrap dealer he said he will be ready to do it at 4 rupee uh, so 28 rupee per kg so that was estimated at about 56 lakh rupees because of 200 tons the control and electronic was at nil value pumps etc we added 3% to the iron value as these are largely reusable this value of 3% we took as an educated estimate by the valuers and so the total residual value was 57.68 lakhs any question sir sir i have a question on a life yes sir could you please go to that particular slide yeah uh, on one hand we are telling that it was a well maintained and as and when it upgraded then why we can uh, we are telling that the residual life is 6 years and not 16 years now what you are saying is absolutely correct now this is where the valuation valuers judgment comes into picture so okay. you uh, uh, here is it's a, the... it's a pure it's a pure valuer judgment i so, I, 
So okay. only for a six years that person is going to acquire the plant. No. The, the no. having having a life of six years only, na? No, please. The person who's acquiring the plant, he also knows the life is six years, eight years, four years, whatever it is. Correct. Ha. Huh. No, that so, is based on based on the valuer's uh, uh, judgment, na? No. no. Okay. This, we we have done the valuation after the plant was acquired. Okay. So okay. after the after the acquisitions, you have done the valuations. Okay. Yes. Fine. Okay. This okay. is this hmm. is for the purchase price allocation. Correct. Understood. Correct. So so this is something we do. and and see such things. You know, if you want to look into residual life. What we also did a calculation for this asset, chlorine alkaline plant. It is better to scrap that asset and to buy a new one, because the new asset, which was much more efficient, is uh, eventually it pays back for itself in four years. Plus, the the buyers they had a much larger vision to increase the whole capacity of this plant by three times. So you know the person who's buying it buys for his their own reason, and the person who sells sells it for own reasons. And valuers don't come into those emotional reasons. Mm -hmm. I'll give you. Had, a, sir, yeah. had, had this valuation been done prior to the acquisition, what would have been the residual life? Maybe zero. See, see the both the two people I told you earlier had got the valuation done. The buyer had got the valuation done at about ninety crores, and the seller had the valuation at two hundred and ninety crores. Okay, so so you know when as a valuer, when we go into these type of things, we look into in a different way altogether. But no, those some, two, somebody must have done the valuation prior to the acquisition. So, sir, during... the, sir, there were two valuer. The seller's valuer did the valuation at two hundred and ninety crores. That two hundred and ninety crore was given to the seller party. It was not given to us. The buyer side valuer had done the valuation at about eighty eight, eighty nine crores, ninety crores. That report was given to the buyer party and not given to us. Right, sir. No, sir. The question was that if you you was the valuer. Prior to the acquisitions, what should be the residual life? You so will that, judge. Those, as, as on today, that is a hypothetical question. Yeah, that I is would, true. That's absolutely. But to understand, yeah. you to see, understand. no. You see, I we have forty-five minutes. <laughs> I don't want to get into that as an argument. No, it you is see, not the me, argument. We are just. Uh, if I am a buyer, if I am the buyer, I would have assessed this. Uh, my assessment of this plant, including land and building, would have been more than two hundred crores. Okay. No, Now you is, may say you please justify. <laughs> it is for it is for the knowledge set. Just we are I'm asking. Yeah. So my my personal assessment would have been two hundred crores. No, that, these, that uh, is what would have been the residual life considered. Excuse See, me, sir. For, for me, the way I would have done the value. Is eighty acres of land with all approvals and the chemical disposition license is far more valuable than anything else. Correct. So the life so of that, the that plant is, and value, the life of plant and machinery is approximately zero years. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes. So at that point, for me, I would have taken it as zero. Correct. As a, okay. Anyway, as, go ahead. Understood. As a buyer, buyer in the land only. <laughs> see, as a buyer, for me, that is more important. Yes. Yes. Understood. So, so, so you know. Excuse me, sir. Yes, sir. The uh, the life of the plant and machinery is it, it cannot be imagined. It is as per the company law. There is schedule is there. Ki what is the economical life of and how much life has been spent already? So balance economical life has to be taken as per the. Company law, I think. Okay. Sir, so that company law so, is so for Mr. the calculation Bhardwar. for the income tax only. No, no, hold on, hold on, hold on. 
so so sir in gujarat there is a bridge called golden bridge have you heard about it sir yeah this is this is baruch that is in baruch it is in baruch it is a beautiful bridge and it is still working on the bottom of the bridge is for now trucks and cars are stopped but the top on the bridge is railways the bridge was made 150 years ago cast iron bridge the weight of cast iron there is about 15000 tons the bridge was made in 6 lakhs or 7 lakh rupees so if i go with the company law the life is already over and the 5% of 6 lakhs is 30000 rupees that is the value of the bridge if i go by income tax it is 1 rupee but 15000 tons i can give it to a scrap dealer at 30 rupees also i will get 6 to how much 6 15000 into i get about 50 crore rupees so sir if i go by company law valuer is not required similarly for land and building the last conveyance deed done or the circle rate is the value but we know very well that is never the value valuer is always plus minus in a place like french colony in delhi the the circle rate is 20% higher than the transaction price so if i have as a valuer have to do it will i do by circle rate the second thing is the type of construction <laughs> so so the reason why valuers are required is we have to take a fair judgment on so many things otherwise we don't need a valuer everything can be done the chartered accountants can do everything the numbers are there yes sir i have a question uh, yes please why there is so much of difference in valuation by buyer and uh, sellers valuers so what you have is a very very good question is a very good question the difference between this is how you perceive the value of that particular asset i will give you a very interesting situation uh, a very good friend of mine they are into lead processing business that's lead out of battery they got an offer for a plant in south india one year old plant that they want to sell it the transaction finished now after this finish then i got into the picture the seller had set up the plant the sellers are big party 3 400 crore party in south they had set up a plant to make their grandson run the plant to make good profits and the grandson had done their engineering and mba from us he came there stayed near the plant for 3 months and then he went back to so <laughs> now the, the sellers they have everything beautiful plant but there is now they don't want to run the plant they say we have money we don't want to go hassles we are based in chennai this plant is 200 km from chennai we don't want to do we want to just sell and get our liabilities out the now so for them it was the getting the liability out which was more important than the actual valuation of course they got the valuation done so that they can negotiate the sellers sorry the buyers they wanted desperately to get a foothold in south they are north based delhi based so they wanted a plant like this which is new evaluated and they were ready to give a much better price which then the sellers were were ready to give and finally what happened <clears throat> they sat down across the table in kolamandalam taj with both of them having a beer in the hand and they decided on the price and it was finished <laughs> so so this will always happen sir yes, a small question a small question is here when it was this plant was in production so why was not it possible Uh, as a going concern on the cash flow basis 
डिस्काउंटेड कैश फ्लो मेथड पॉसिबल सर ऑफकोर्स इट इज पॉसिबल नाउ सर द वैल्युएशन शुड रिफ्लेक्ट सम लेवल ऑफ इनहेरेंट वैल्यू ऑफ द ऑफ द टोटल एसेट suppose this plant is making 5 crore rupees profit in a year now if so the total value of the plant at 5 crore rupees and you keep on increasing 12% and you discount it will come to far lesser than the cost of the physical asset and the land cost itself was over 85 90 crores in fact rather i would say over 100 crores 120 130 crores so you know what we are using as a valuation we also as a valuer we also have to justify that and to justify it should also reflect some level of market reality sir i have a car which is opel made in 1958 what is the value of the car now one way to look at it is it is a scrap it is environmentally unfriendly it cannot run in the market so the value is scrap 5000 the second way to look at it it is an ancient car it is a it is a collector's car and it will go at 40 50 lakh rupees to a collector correct sir हेलो अग्रवाल साहब एक्सक्यूज मी हेलो हेलो हाँ जी हाँ जी प्लीज अग्रवाल साहब आई हैव क्वेश्चन प्लीज यस प्लीज आई एम जस्ट डूइंग वैल्यूएशन ऑफ ए प्लांट इन विच ग्रॉस ब्लॉक इज गिवन एंड डेप्रिशिएशन ग्रॉस गिवन एंड नेट ब्लॉक वैल्यू इज गिवन देन आई एम नो मींस इट इज वेरी डिफिकल्ट टू पुल आउट इन्फॉर्मेशन फ्रॉम दैट एफ Mm-hmm. of in individual machines mm-hmm. and uh, because of this reason i am just going only uh, with the values uh, of uh, net block mm-hmm. what is your opinion about this that is wrong totally wrong no the then what i should do see first what you do is you have the far first yeah. please physical inspection make sure what is the major equipment constituting more than 3 to 5% of that total far at least write that list if you don't have it uh, no list i am having a list of equipment okay once But... you have the list of the equipment then yeah. you have to find what is the replacement cost of that equipment and that what how you have to find by going into websites calling up the manufacturer and only then you can do but that plant was established sometime in 2004 and uh... immaterial sir immaterial mm-hmm. immaterial so i i'll i'll just show you in this also i'll just show you okay so the final valuation we had adjusted uh our okay let me show you here now the comparisons i want to do the gross block 93.23 crores the present value as per company act life is 15 years residual value is 5% so the value now should be 4.66 crores why should we do any valuation why should a valuer come there okay the second is present value as per income tax depreciation allowed is 15% now for 24 year depreciation was 948% so value now is 2% so the value is 1.86 crores so as per income tax my value is 1.86 crore for that particular asset and as per company law it is 4.66 crores whereas from my side it comes to about 32.5 with a calculation error now what is the right value the right value is the negotiated between the two parties and let me now explain what uh, mr nikaram is saying 
sir you buy a car in 2004 let us say at about 3 lakh rupees okay sir okay okay now in 2022 in delhi this car is worth 10000 rupees only and in let us say chandigarh or or panchkula or except delhi and bombay anywhere else this will be worth about 20000 rupees only now what is the difference and as per company is act this should be worth 15000 rupees 5% what is the difference sir policy of the government at delhi absolutely correct absolutely correct sir the delhi does not allow car to run after 15 years so it is the lowest scrap value of 10000 rupees you will get for the people who will take out parts and use it in a new car i tell you sir personally personally my case i had a honda city which i had purchased in baroda it was 14 and a half year old in march in delhi i was getting a price of 35000 then i called up olx uh, auto people i am not i have i have nothing no relation with olx so please don't take me on that so when the olx people came they said fine they took the photograph do everything inspection whatever and they offered me 92000 they told me in kuch because your car is of gujarat baroda registration the people there can run it for 6 more years so you are getting 90000 if it was delhi we would have given you 45000 absolutely practical sir Uh, yeah in case of car only yeah in case so but, uh, uh, but not uh, uh, in case of big plants sir in case of big plants there are different type of assets which have different lives and we have to judge the life if you think that the life given by company law is final then virtually you know then who will run the companies i have i have worked in bhel bhel all the old machines are more than 60 years old and they are running fine they should have been scrapped at the age of when they were 15 year old sir you cannot do that valuation may in plant and machinery valuation the valuation will be done as per the life and depreciation as per the use and so on the yeah. same as I said and the same asset in different plants will be on a different things similarly in land and building a asset in panchkula will have a different value than a asset in delhi or that asset in shimla so you know you cannot say that the, the rule says that uh, circle rate only will do and why circle rate is different so the reason why valuation comes into or a valuer is where these judgments are made and these judgments can be substantiated so sir your view about 2004 if you are going to take only as per the uh, depreciation and the net block i am sorry sir it will not be correct okay coming back yeah so what we also i showed you that the if we go by the companies act then the value will be 4.66 if we go by income tax value by will be 1.86 crores so it is very clear that the valuation done by company law is for a different purpose valuation done as per income tax is for a different purpose and valuation done by the valuer is for a different purpose okay sir so
So here, what we have also done some assumptions that any addition till 50 lakhs were ignored. There were small, small additions which they had done in between 1 lakh, 4 lakh, whatever. We ignored that. Now, new owner may discard this for a new plant uh, that is more as that is more efficient. That is what at least they told us. We don't know what they, what they have done or not. And shifting of these plants is nearly impossible as these are composite, a lot of civil structures and they are quite high, 35 meter high, 100 feet and so. So just to take out the plant and shift these plants is extremely difficult. So we have taken a lot of these assumptions, you know, while we do valuations and so on. Okay. So after this, I want to take one more case related to this plant, not of index, but a, a very interesting position. Any questions on this, sir? Uh, yes, please. Uh, I'm a land and building valuer. Yes, sir. So the, uh, whatever value you got, uh, you told is it about uh, like 150 crores, not the exact figure. You said it's 150 crores, no, your valuation. Uh, no, 150 oh. crore approximately was the transaction price between the buyer and seller. Okay, which includes land and building. Which includes land and building. Now I just checked, I mean, uh, in that area, industrial land, it costs about, let us say, 1.5 crores per uh, acre, which is 120 crores of land only. Okay. And then, then the rest is for the plant. Sir, when the negotiation took place, they, this, they said it is the complete plant with land and building, the car, the stippler, the computer, mm -hmm. the printer, everything together. No, that's the exactly. Owners, what I'm owners, telling is, that means it is underpriced. No, valuation is undervalued. Rather, that negotiated price is uh, uh, it's not a fair value. Sir, you are, I think you are mistaking something. The negotiation mm. took place between the owners, not between the valuers. I know, I know, I got it. That means it has to be exchanged at a particular value, no? Fair value, no? Not necessarily. Sir, how do I know, sir? Sir, I go to, yesterday I went to buy vegetables uh, at 9 o'clock. The vegetable was uh, at less than half the price. It yeah. is not the fair price because the vegetable seller said that instead of throwing it away, whatever value I get is a fair value. Mm, you are right. So what should I do? Shall I still pay him the price which he would have gotten when it was fresh? So market conditions have nothing to do with valuation. We do looking into our estimate. When the buyer and seller are they are negotiating the same property mm. can be sold at a different price. I know in, in multi-complex, uh, sorry, multi housing societies which are high-rise, two adjacent flats are sold at different prices. Correct, sir? Correct, correct. What is the fair value for both? Mm. And, and those have nothing to do with the, uh, what you call circle rate. Correct. Right, right. I, I have also seen one case where a person paid a higher price because he felt that that particular apartment was more vastu compliant than the other apartment. Right. He has got his plus points there. So, so that is his way of looking. Is it a fair market value? Hmm. No. So, you know, what transaction take place between two, between a buyer and a seller? And they both are emotional. They both have got their subjective interest. They both are so many things. A valuation takes, tries to take emotions out of it and gives a value which would have been transacted by two parties not related at an arm's length in a mm. fair exchange, both knowing the property altogether, not under duress. You know, so all those yeah. things as per IVS. Okay, okay, sir. Please go ahead. Please go ahead with your... Yes, sir. Any other questions, sir? Thank you. Thank you. No questions. Okay. So, let's take this one more complicated case on the same. That is of 
chlorine cylinders, because they were producing chlorines, these were filled in the cylinders and then they were supplied to people. As per BIS, Bureau of Indian Standards, the life is 15 years and they require recertification after 7.5 years. And there is only one major manufacturer, which is Inox in Pune, which makes the chlorine cylinders. And these chlorine cylinders are not manufactured regularly like the LPG gas cylinder. So they have long delivery times. And sale of chlorine can happen only through cylinders. There is no pipeline or whatever it is. And a cylinder can stay at a customer place for one week to eight weeks. Uh, this is what we were told. So they have to give the, when they have to sell chlorine, they have to give a cylinder. And each cylinder is uniquely numbered and regulated. And the new cylinder cost is approximately 40,000 rupees. And repairs are not allowed on these cylinders. You cannot do a welding or anything on these cylinders. So this is a case of cylinders. So this is how the chlorine cylinder looks like. Now, this is from 98 up to 2021. This is the way they have used the cylinder on purchase and scrap. So you can see the buy quantities and the scrap quantities. The question is, now they have 3,273 cylinders. What should be the valuation of these cylinders? We determine the average scrap percentage and then apply it possibly. That's the one estimation. Yeah. How do we calculate the average life? That's absolutely correct. That is the whole idea. See, if you look into it, if we ignore the buy side, we have the scrap side. And the scrap side is different for every year from 237, 1500, 60, 562. You know, so there's a difference. It's not a regular. So how do we calculate now that uh, what should be the scrap numbers for these? Yes, Suji. Suji. So the question is, regulated life is 15 years. How much average life we are getting from 1998 to 2021? And with that average life, rest all calculations is easy. Any idea, sir? You take the cumulative scrap amount and the cumulative buy amount, possibly. Cumulative buy and cumulative scrap, if I deduct, I will get 3293. Oh, OK, OK. The balance is already there, sir. Oh, so okay. I, I have to do the valuation of 3273. Mm -hmm. Now, the life of 3273 will not be 15 years. That is correct, sir? Yes, sir. So this life mm -hmm. will be different. How mm -hmm. much different, I don't know. Mm -hmm. So you have to consider those purchased from 2008. Because earlier than it is more than 50 days, we ignored that. Oh, fine. Then what? Hmm. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's okay. So we, we, we also had racked our brains and did uh, discussions with several other people and we came to a conclusion. And this conclusion was debated by SEBI also, but they agreed. But if you, sir, do the LIFO uh, concept, so according to LIFO, the, the, the stock of 3273 is maybe purchased either from 2015 or 16. I'm not sure exact as per the calculations, but uh, you can take the life accordingly. Okay, that is uh, one way. See, one thing very interesting is if you see the first scrap of 237, it happened in one year, year one. Correct, sir? Now, once it happened in year one, which means the uh, chlorine cylinders, these are accidents also happening for which there is a scrap happening. They are not. Huh. I'm, so I'm asking. 
sir i'm asking you one question i'm sorry to disturb you in this yeah, point yeah, yeah. here you have uh, uh, pointed out that they have by the uh, 2334 in 1998 do we have any opening stock before no, the no. buying this no no nothing no nothing. okay 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 fine this thank is... you for the clarification yeah yeah see the factory started in 97 So that's how they purchased in 1998. Zero stocks. This was the starting. So the major stocks might be the two, three, two, seven, three. These stocks might be from 2017 onwards. You see, the easiest way to do is is you take the three, two, seven, three. You take the number which is written on the cylinder. Which is a unique number. With that unique number, take the purchase date of that cylinder and do it. But going there, if which means you have to sit down there, you and your person. He will take at least five to six days to come to that conclusion. And all of it is a cost. And we know very well valuation as a profession is not a very high uh, fees. <laughs> 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 so so you know we 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 want to be very good but we also don't want to spend so much of time <laughs> okay so how we did it was we have to get the life of the cylinder and valuation is very clear so get the year past how many years have passed from 2021 you get that multiply with the cylinders scrapped and total get the total cylinder scrapped and divide and deduct that number from 15 now let me show you how it is so this is the buy the one which i had shown you year buy scrap and the stock then what i did was how many years have elapsed since 2021 i have assumed 2021 as year 1 so from here into to 1999 23 years have elapsed so what i did i multiplied these years by the scrap quantity and i totaled it and i totaled the total scrap and i divided so i got 11.42 so my average life is 15 minus 4 3.58 years because in 3273 i might have a cylinder which is 14 year old i don't know so this is what we call is a weighted average method so by doing this weighted average method we were able to we we did it and interestingly the reason i showed this example was the largest amount of discussion in our with merchant bankers and sebi was on this that well, how can you take this and why did you take this and so on because most of the people sitting there are accounts people not engineers so for them to take a residual life another thing is a different thing but this becomes very easy calculation i guess what is the what is the value of each cylinder empty cylinder i mean about 40000 rupees today so you are taking all this trouble for 40000 into 3 to 3000 40000 40 almost 1 crore 1.2 crore okay fine sir the problem here is not 1.2 crore the problem is once you are signing on a valuation report which is going to be scrutinized mm -hmm. so first is you have to save your skin mm -hmm. the second thing is also it is an opportunity to show to a different class of people that we are good valuers so it is mm -hmm. also like a marketing <laughs> so future assignment can come so yeah. maybe we don't know <laughs> maybe because uh, uh, this we know for this that uh, sometimes uh, even the court they order a independent valuers as per appointed by the court so in in some cases of property dispute when two brothers were fighting about a property the court ordered a, a revaluation of the property and it was given to our firm that uh, please you do the value court gave it to us and court decided the fees so 
you know so you get such assignments and these assignments come only on on strong mm-hmm. reputations or the big four see these type of proper valuations normally go to big four we don't get it we are you know as a individual valuer it is even more difficult to get it now how do the big four give it to us and the big four should have the you know they they should be told or or they should have the comfort or they should know that these people understand all these things sir what is the last column showing 5451 starts with 5451 oh this is years multiplied by scrap okay so what i have done is i have taken the scrap multiplied by years so i get this value now and from this value i have divided by the scrap and i got 11.42 so this is a weighted average method correct sir okay and 15 year is the life so i, I divide this by 15 and i get 3.58 years so it looks very easy for me it was quite difficult even to get the standards of the chlorine cylinder and the life and the testing procedures you know <laughs> it looks very easy so that means the, average uh, average life is 3.58 years for them for this factory Sir, it it might be the other way around too, because two thousand twenty one. If you have bought one thousand cylinders, twenty you have bought four fifty six. If you just add on the bottom four, so it is bottom five. So it is around one thousand, one thousand, two thousand from starting from two thousand seventeen. Yeah, yeah, it will be approximately two thousand, three thousand, four thousand nine hundred approximately. One, two, three. Uh, four thousand nine. Approximately four thousand nine hundred. Maybe the okay. stock, whatever stock, three two seven three. That must be from the two thousand seventeen onwards. The latest oh, ones. So I don't know. First is because all these cylinders are not in the factory. Most of these cylinders are already different places with their customers. Hmm. So ho- hopefully it should be from two thousand seventeen because the earlier stocks might have been destroyed. No, so now might, might have been sold. so if we go into the more statistical conclusion then it will follow some sort of a binomial series right, right. so so you know so that is getting into a different uh, subject now yeah, whatever you have done is correct <laughs> but uh, <laughs> i mean logically it should be start starting from 2017 i mean the latest ones logically no, no, the point we are missing out which 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 mr agarwal had uh, mentioned that this chlorine cylinders which are bought are not staying in the plant they are going out to customers so not that you know 1900 bought in 2017 may that only 100 or 200 are there rest is going to sir i understand but the average life of a cylinder if it is 15 years can no, we no, please please sir average life is 3. Point, uh, mandated life is 15 years a mandated life if it is 15 years can we conclude that the average life is 3.58 years correct no 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 the average life of the remaining 3000 odd cylinders that is in the plant is 3.58 not the is new it, new cylinder yeah we this have cal- balance balance so economic we, life i i understand average balance economic and life is say out of 3273 1000 one numbers has been bought is there 2021 So they no, it's have, not there. It has gone out to gone out to the customer side. I understand. I understand. I understand. But hopefully, normally in all cases, the earlier ones people destroy, and the remaining, I mean, the new ones they keep in the plant. I mean, plant or wherever. I mean, in the useful life, they use it. I mean, in normal circumstances, I don't dispute this, but this is just a saying. okay so the the reason i was trying to show this across is that places where we have worked hard we had tried to come out with something by which we were able to satisfy the authorities also i wanted to share to all our fraternity that maybe you know in life we get an assignment where we can use a similar fundamental that is the whole idea mm-hmm. nothing more thank you sir thank you
okay sir now this uh, uh, this completes uh, the thing and uh, any other question answers or whatever i will send this across to uh, to divya jyoti and they will definitely get in touch or they will pass it across to all the people thank you sir thank you so much okay thank you thank you thank you Okay. Any other questions, sir? I have got today. one one general Today's question. Even... I have got one question. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I yes, missed sir. out few minutes in the beginning of the uh, presentation. So, when this plant we understand is bought by Mohana Sugar of Gujarat. No, no, no. The, okay. No, the plant has been purchased by Bodal Chemicals of Gujarat. Okay. And sold by Mavana Sugars of UP. Okay. now today and this is by not by nclt or anything this is no, by no 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 okay. private it is called a private treaty private treaty and this mamana sugar is still existing i can see a mamana sugar share price uh, in the in the in, in the in the side absolutely so sir is still an existing uh, yes plant. yes no mamana sugar is still an existing company company they are they are large producers of sugar alcohol mm -hmm. whiskey mm -hmm. and so on <laughs> oh, okay 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 and this plant it, it is all part of the bharatram group company right it was now it is part of bodal chemicals okay thank you thank you for the clarification <laughs> sir nclt cases are of a different type Mm -hmm. and non nclt e and non nclt cases mm -hmm. are of a different thing so so in public coated company the cases becomes even more difficult because the scrutiny of the logic and everything becomes more difficult mm -hmm. i'll give you another example where we face uh we did a valuation of a company called bharat pump and compressor limited at naini near alabad or prayagraj now what had happened in the company was it was making a loss for 15 20 25 years the modi government on the board decided to close the company the decision was taken in the cabinet at 12 o'clock in the afternoon the cif was informed before the management of the company was informed and by 2 o'clock cif had brought in so many people and all the workers were taken out of the plant in half an hour and when they were taken out and the whole thing was locked then the directors and others people you know sitting and all they became very jittery and then they came to know after 5 o'clock that this has happened so when we had done the valuation and we went there we saw cutting tools and welding rods and everything lying there as if you know somebody has just walked out the good thing is because they were taken out like this the plant was in extremely good condition okay the things which is started off even more interesting was the land value of the plant was zero why the land was given on a perpetual lease at the will of the up government to that public sector company so the public sector company had no rights to do anything on the land they can either run the factory or the up government will take it so so you know now that became a very interesting case and there we they had a generator which was in 1980s of sakoda 2.5 megawatt absolutely hopeless and so another very interesting case on residual value uh i don't know how many people remember there was a, a roof which fell down in a society in gurgaon the sixth floor roof which fell down by three floors okay after that the local administration 
gave instruction for a lot more uh, checks and so on. Uh, and NBCC had a project here in sector 37 mm -hmm. and that project, it was, it had deteriorated, it had shown cracks on the building after three years and the local administration, the district commissioner and so on had to order for people to vacate it. So we were given the way to value that in case it has to be brought down, what money we will get. Now, it was very interesting when we talked to the people who were scrap buyers, everybody said, we will take, break the building and take the scrap, we won't give you anything. Why? They said the cost of breaking is approximately equal to the cost of the scrap. Of course, all the DG set and other thing, they said, that is your property, we will not touch it. But on the civil side, the scrap value, the breaking and shifting of the scrap and the value of the scrap is same. In this case, in Gurgaon, because land and building valuation is extremely dependent on the location. So, so these are the ways uh, why we see residual life has to be seen on certain level of logic. We can't take 5% or 10% just for the heck of it. No, I've got one question regarding Bharat pumps and compressors. Mm -hmm. I just found that it's still a running company. So why why did uh, Modi government... So I, so I don't know where did you find it is a running company. Mm -hmm. Because uh, I know for sure the mm -hmm. all the machines, all the people have been laid off. They have been paid off. There is no employee and all the machines have also shifted out of that premises. Oh, okay. So there is a tender notice, but I find out that's only for security tender. Okay, fine. That explains. Yeah, because the, the my information, last information is that it is now the UP government trying to get somebody, some public sector or somebody to come and run a factory there. Because all the mechanical assets have been purchased by a private party in Bombay. Mm -hmm. And they have uh, all, it's all moving out. The security tenders are different. It's yeah, not since a, if the government owns the land, they can definitely set up something there. Yeah. Same thing is with BHEL. Very interesting. All the land of that BHEL has, none of it is a property of BHEL. It is all a property of the local government, which has been given free to BHEL to run for factories and for social causes and so. And now that BHEL is in, you know, nobody is buying coal thermal power plants. So they cannot monetize the land. Sir, even if it is on lease for, I say, 99 years with BHL, they cannot monetize. No, they cannot monetize because they are not the owners. See, you if, cannot sell. The, the second lease, thing is... Even the, the lease, lease, leasehold rights? No, the lease rights have to be then seen. I was coming to that sentence. It will then will have to be seen whether the lease can be transferred. Yeah. So, but normally transfer of lease in industrial land still requires approval of the lessee. For example, in SEZ, you cannot transfer leases. SEZ is totally different. Totally different. Yeah, but as an, as an example, you know, mm -hmm. property is a very interesting subject. <laughs> Sir, can, will you please tell me your number, please, phone number? Yeah, I'll send you my presentation. It is there, written there. Okay, okay. So even then, if you tell me once. Yeah, yeah. 98735. 35. 92082. 82. So you are stationed at Delhi? I'm stationed at Gurgaon. Gurgaon. Okay, okay. Thank you, sir. Sir, last question. Are we going to win the match today? <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> sure. Sure, sure, sure. Of course. <laughs> Because I had to force Divya Jyoti to put it in the morning. They had put it at in the <laughs> after evening. I said, no. <laughs> we have to see the match. And the last match with Pakistan was superb. Superb. Yeah, exactly. So thank you very much for your thank lovely you, presentation. Lovely thank presentation. Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you. Yeah, yeah. And thank this you presentation, much, thank you. So this presentation will go to Divya Jyoti in the next half an hour uh -huh. as a PDF and they will share it with everybody. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you, everyone. Now we are going to close this end this session.